Hello there, my fellow disease champions of the Dark Gods, and welcome back to our mini-series that I titled Lords of Chaos. This is a place where we talk about the most notorious and infamous characters associated with the Ruinous Powers in the 40k setting. I know it has been a little while since I made the first video on Kalas Typhon, aka Typhus, but I did promise you I would make at least two episodes on him. So, here we are today. We're gonna continue to talk about his career and his exploits from the Horus Heresy all the way to the present. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? While they were trapped in the warp, the Death Guard were subjected to the terrible infection of the Destroyer Plague and Nurgle's Rot, as the power of Nurgle managed to infiltrate the vessels of the 14th Legion. Before long, fat devil flies buzzed through the thickening miasma inside each and every warship. Where they bit at the desperate warriors inside, their flesh turned to jelly. Bellies distended and eyes ran like cracked eggs. Even power armor melted and flowed into strange new shapes. It was here that the superhuman resilience of the Death Guard would prove to be their weakness, because they could not just die nor were they allowed to by the Plague Lord. Instead, they were slowly and sickeningly changed into what we know today as Plague Marines. Their souls claimed by Nurgle in exchange for a permanent release from their pain. Typhon, having orchestrated this grand corruption, was rewarded most of all. He swelled in size, his skin and armor becoming as one. Great funnels of pestilential horns came out of his body. Into these poured thousands and thousands of demon flies of Nurgle. Thus, Typhon became a great colony of disease-carrying insects. Now called Typhus, the host of the Destroyer Hive, had been born, most blessed and most cursed of all his repugnant kin. Although the Horus Heresy was eventually defeated, the traitor legions claimed by the Dark Gods were changed forever. After the death of the Warmaster at the hands of the Emperor, the traitors fled Terra and burned their way across the galaxy and into the Eye of Terror. They were pursued by those legions that were still loyal to the Emperor. As the Retribution War, called the Great Scouring, blazed across the stars, the traitor legions made new homes within the trackless reaches of the Eye. Typhus would find himself fighting against the most surreal creatures he had ever seen. Worms of living crystal were shattered by his great scythed blade. Eight-armed minotaurs were reduced to biological sludge by his psychic blasts. And shapely sirens met their end at the mutant horns of bone that protruded out of his body. Just as before, he survived. Mortarion, by this point a full demon prince of Nurgle, eventually claimed a distant planet that would become known simply as the Plague Planet, as his full domain. And there he would rule as a king of demons and corrupt space marines. Mortarion would shape the demon world to resemble Barbarus, his former home planet. Typhus, on the other hand, was sickened by this sentimentality. His loyalty was to Nurgle and Nurgle alone, and the power of Nurgle was stronger when mortals were afraid for their lives. By that point, Typhus was a legend in his own right, and he was not content with a sedentary existence at the hand of Mortarion. Instead, he marshaled all those with a bitter enmity for the Imperium, forming a mighty plague fleet all of his own. At its head was the famous warship the Terminus Est, the spear that Typhus intended to plunge deep into the heart of the Imperium. Ever since that day, Typhus had visited a thousand diseases upon the Imperium of Man. The Destroyer Plague is without a doubt the most devastating of all, although its vector of demonic insects means it has a rather limited radius of effect. Typhus was always an ambitious man and his relentless search for the perfect plague had led to the destruction of worlds, nations, and even entire star systems. Typhus even walked in the Garden of Nurgle itself, in the Realm of Chaos, 
learning a great many ways to turn order and structure into chaotic decay. It is whispered that he followed a humanoid emissary composed entirely of his own destroyer demon flies to the outskirts of the garden, lulling its sentient fungus and bewitching its guardians with tales of entropy and despair. When the Crimson Legions of Corn invaded the garden and cut down every single living thing they could find, it was Typhus that coordinated the garden's defense. At the climax of that battle, Typhus overcame the gigantic demon prince that led the Corn Legions. Slowly but surely crippling the dog-headed monstrosity with ever more powerful plagues until he was able to best him in single combat. Such was the resultant favor of the Lord of Decay that Typhus was allowed to reach the throne of Nurgle itself, presenting his offering before dipping his battle scythe into the filth that pulled around it, and withdrawing quickly before death finally found even him. Stories such as that abound wherever Typhus goes, because his ambition is as fierce as ever. As his journeys across the Imperium bring system after system to ruin, Typhus became even more convinced that he is the true son of Nurgle. Mortarion has proved his lack of worth by failing to wage the long war against the Imperium. In the eyes of Typhus, the Primarch was only the vector by which the Plague Marines were birthed into the universe. By comparison, Typhus had been relentless in his prosecution of his god's goal. He unleashed Nurgle's rod upon Carandini Seven and Proteus turning billions of ailing souls into plague bearers. On the world of Lygita, he loosed a plague song that forced the infected to sing the hymns of Nurgle even as they slowly rotted away. He wiped out the entire male population of Florence with the dreaded Red Flux, and engineered a pandemic on Jonah's world, reducing a once proud shrine world to a global necropolis of rot-filled tombs. But the crowning glory of Typhus's achievements is the introduction of the zombie plague into the Segmentum Obscurus. With this terrible new curse, Typhus has fused the cycles of life and death together, an act which greatly pleased his master. The zombie plague is a warp disease, and it can infect those who have no hope or faith in their hearts. In the uncaring grind of Imperial life, the vast majority of the population can be counted among that number. The unfortunate victims of this horrendous malady rot from the inside out, coughing themselves to death over a long and painful period. Unfortunately, that is only the beginning of the suffering. Those that do fall do not stay dead. Their bodies are reanimated by the uncanny power of the arcane infection and they lurch after the living, desperate to gnaw upon warm flesh. Even a single bite can transfer the infection to a new host, and then the process begins anew. When he is not busy reaping a bloody harvest for Nurgle with his Man Reaper on the field of battle, Typhus is immobile on the Terminus Estis bridge. His mind fuses with the mighty vessel's senses in search for a next destination among the eddies and currents of the Immaterium. His tireless travels to find yet more places to spread the blessings of Nurgle have earned him the half-reverent and half-mocking title of the Traveler, among the other powerful servants of the Chaos Gods. Some other notable campaigns and events he took part in include during the period of the Black Crusades, Warmaster Abaddon forges many packs with the greatest chaos powers, among them the Death Guard. Mortarion's scorn for Abaddon is obvious, but the Demon Primarch cannot ignore his successes, and so he sends warbands of his own to aid in several of the Despoilers' campaigns. Typhus, on the other hand, aided Abaddon more readily, fighting alongside him more than once and using his attacks upon the Cadian Gate as an opportunity to spread the seeds of the zombie plague far and wide. In 757 and 41, the first outbreak of the zombie plague occurs on Hydra Minoris after Typhus and the Death Guard penetrate to the heart of its capital hive city. As the living begin to fall prey to the painful disease, its true horror is revealed. The dead begin to rise and attack the living. 
The resulting imperial quarantine would trap 23 billion citizens alongside the tide of the undead. In 969 M41, the terminus est is sighted in the Kando system. It disappears afterwards, but by that point it is already too late. The zombie plague ravages all the planets in the system over the following solar months, exposing the worst in human nature as brother turns against brother in their desperation to survive. Typhus would invade Hive Pandorial with the zombie plague as well, but departing before Imperial Retribution could arrive. Instead of encountering a hated and ancient enemy, the courageous men of the Imperial Guard's Necromundan Spiders will find themselves plunging deep into the shadowed horrors of a hive city filled only with the shambling corpses of those they came to save. Ever since the annihilation of Cadia, Typhus and the Victoriums of the First Plague Company have repeatedly been sighted around the shattered Cadian Gate. Striking at beleaguered Imperial worlds, they see the infestations of the Walking Plague, overrunning the armies of the Imperium with tides of groaning, shambling victims that leave only desolation and desperation in their wake. Sometime in early M42, as the warp storm Fomori engulfed the world of Danasar, Typhus would duel, defeat and humble no less a character than Huron Blackheart atop the ruins of the Endless Spire. He does leave the Tyrant of Badab alive, as an abject lesson not to meddle in Nurgle's affairs, but also out of his, Airtag's, generosity. Alongside the Chaos Warbands, the Cleaved and the Purge, and several other forces, Typhus would lead the First Plague Company in a raid against the planet Medusa, the homeworld of the Iron Hands chapter. The chapter defenders do drive off the attackers, but not before terrible damage is done, leaving entire regions of the planet cursed as quarantine zones. Typhus later appeared as part of Mortarion's armada during the Death Guard invasion of Ultramar. Typhus himself would lead a splinter fleet terrorizing the outer regions. During the invasion proper, Typhus no longer maintained even slight reverence for his Primarch. The Herald of Nurgle even scolded Mortarion, stating that he was the closer one to the vision of Nurgle. He expressed no desire to work under Mortarion directly, but he was willing to take part in the Ultramar campaign simply to further the design of Nurgle. And all of this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about Kalas Typhon, now known as Typhus, Herald of Nurgle, or Typhus the Traveler, for today. I am certain that there are other events and campaigns that he was involved with that I didn't mention, and if you know any of those that are meaningful, do feel free to mention them. Is Typhus among your favorite champions of chaos? Do you think he is the better avatar of Nurgle than Mortarion? Do share your thoughts in the comments below if you want. If you found the episode particularly plagued and diseased, do click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future plagues of Nurgle. You can also click the notification bell button to stay more up to date. Thank you very much for watching to the end and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor Protects